Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, I have most recent vintage on the show. And guess what? He is the editor. He's my good friend, Matt. Stoked to have him on the show. This is kind of a special edition because we're just shooting the shit. Matt's been editing the show for a long time. Uh, so we know each other very well. We went to Festivus last year. He created the Festivus doc that if you guys haven't seen from last year, you definitely want to go check on the YouTube. Um, but yeah, we talk a lot about Festivus. He was there again this year. He goes to most of the thrift cons. We talk about thrift con. We talk about his experience um, in marketing because he basically creates tons of reels and marketing materials that go viral all the time. So stoked to have Matt on the show. He's a good guy. Everybody go give him a follow and enjoy this episode. Super Mario with that mustache, or or is yeah. it is it uh, Luigi? I guess I could be. No wait, I don't think Luigi has one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I I just got Mario vibes. And are you Italian? I am. And you live in Jersey. Yes, I do. <laughs> my homeland. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show, my man. Thanks, dude. I'm stoked to be here. I never thought I'd. Uh... He's sitting in this chair. Well, fuck. Dreams do come true. Yes, they do. <laughs> ah, that's my, my one birthday but... wish. Yeah, happy birthday, man. How old are you today? Thanks. 29. Holy shit. 29. Yep. Ah, dreams that. do come true, but the dream is almost over. You're almost in your 30s. It's all downhill, bud. Yeah, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but maybe in your forties. Well, we'll see. My thirties are yeah, pretty that's, good. Yeah, that's that's the real hump. So 40s. you are uh, the editor of this show, and nobody's ever been able to see your face before today. So I'm excited for them to get to know you because you're you're the man behind the magic. Yeah, dude. That's yeah. freaking sweet. Do you remember back to the first time we met? Yeah, it was Festivus last year, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I was and, in. Uh, I was chilling. I was chilling at the Chili's, getting drunk, and you and Dylan pulled up in the rental. Hell and, no! Uh, we got to know each other on that three-hour drive. Yeah, let's talk about your day that day because you pulled into town before us, and then uh, you spent the day uh, doing what? Walking around. Um, I guess I was. I don't know. I guess my memory is kind of foggy, but I flew I into, you, uh, it was Albuquerque, right? Yeah. Albuquerque. And I, I went around to as many of the, like the breaking bad filming locations as I could. Uh, a lot of which were like, looked nothing like they did in the show. Cause it's been what 15 years and Albuquerque was kind of a dump. Honestly, it's kind of sad. It was all run down and shit. Yeah, well, it is true to its uh, true to its rep in the show. Bit of a meth town, maybe. Yeah, meth vibes for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we met that day. We had known each other a little bit before that, but then we then we went on the great adventure to Festivus Number One, which was great time. We'll jump into that whole story, and and we want the re your review of Number Two because you just basically came from there. Yeah. Yes. Last weekend. Uh, so yeah, you're I a traveling man now, dude. Yeah, you have some thoughts? Yeah, I have some thoughts for sure, but we can get to that. Okay, uh, cool. So yeah, yeah a bunch of things I want to talk about on this episode. I want to talk about, you know, that, that, all the travels you've been doing. You've been going to lots of events. You've been kind of keeping up with, keeping up with the Joneses of the vintage world, I guess you could say. 
Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. I've been jet setting a lot. Uh, jet setter. How are you enjoying it? You know, honestly, at first I was like, "This is awesome," and now I'm kind of <laughs> burnt out because it's like yeah. there's plenty of leisure, sure, but I am essentially going out there to work. So I'm working all week, and then I'm working on the weekend. Then I get home and I have to work more, and then it's like, fuck, like I don't really have that much free time now. And I can't complain, but it is kind of getting I'm well, a little bit complaining. burnt out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. I, I'm pretty burnt out, I'll be honest. But I think... Um, yeah, fair enough. I'm going to Vegas tomorrow for ThriftCon. And then I'm done for like a month or something. So so let's talk ThriftCons then. <clears throat> You've been to how many, how many of them now? Probably like five. Ish. I did like okay. Atlanta. Uh, what else? I did Atlanta. That was it. No. Uh, <laughs> fuck. What was the last one? You did Portland? I didn't go to no. Portland. Oh, the last one I did was in Texas. Oh yeah, they they had a Houston one. Did you go? Did they have mm-hmm. a Colorado one again? In Denver. Yeah, I went to that too. Yes. Okay, so you've yeah. kind of that's like a good spread around the country, um, for sure. In my opinion, those guys crush it. Those events are like definitely some of the best out there for vintage. What are your mm-hmm. opinion on it? And like, which one was the best so far? So, um, yeah, I mean, they're super put together. I mean, there's a lot more moving parts going on than I initially thought. Um, like they have a huge team and it's every time it's been super like well done. You can tell they got it like a, a well oiled machine now. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's great. It's a great event and I've had a blast at all of them. I mean, as honestly, they're like crazy. Like they're a blur too. Cause I'm, I'm going around the whole time with the camera and only have a little bit of time to actually like stop and shop and, you know, look at some of the stuff, but, um, what about the crowds? Yeah. Like what, what, how do the crowds differ from town to town? Honestly, I haven't really noticed like a super obvious, like demographic change between events. Like I think all of them have the, the basic, like vintage heads. And then there's just like random people, like people showing up with their parents, like, we saw this was in town, so we're going, and they have no idea what they're in for. You know? Yeah. Like, I feel like people hear ThriftCon, and they're like, oh, cool, let's go thrifting. And then they show up, and it's like $500 tees and, like, you know, the trade pit and, like, craziness. Not to say that you can't get good deals on shit there, but... Um, yeah, I feel like if any event has a good mix, it's definitely that event. Mm-hmm. But you are right. That goes back to the, the golden question of the overuse of the word thrift within our vintage community. Because we're, yes. we're taking it from the thrift and then we're trying to somehow market it back as thrift when it's not actually thrift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've ranted about that before, but I don't agree with it. I think it's weird. Um, it's a weird concept and it like muddies the waters of the it muddies the waters of our uh, understanding of both sides of that the line yeah what's thrift and what's vintage right for sure especially to the layman who's like understands thrifting to be one thing you know like thrift stores obviously and then they go to an event like thrift con and or you know like a curated shop that has thrift in the name or whatever and it's like yeah i mean i I can understand it from like a marketing, you know, point of like driving people in because, you know, who doesn't like to be thrifty or whatever. But yeah, I think it's weird, too. It's kind of dishonest. You're saying like Like, if you see a sign that says thrift, you're like, oh, that's cool. I got to stop. Like it's it's a tactic. Yeah. And even, you know, I feel like it. People that are into the vintage game are not going to fall for it, but it's the people that like aren't that will, and then 
have like a misconception or yeah yeah I, mean, I don't know someone came in the store even yesterday and was like or not yesterday maybe two days ago but they were asking like what is this people come in all the time who've never been in our store because we have a sign the one in squamish it's like in an industrial area and there's just a sign on the road so people get yeah. lured by the sign and the sign says vintage but it says vintage like big mm -hmm. they come in they're like what is this i don't get it is this thrift is this consignment they always think it's consignment and then i have to explain to them like no no we buy all the clothes we have pickers we have teams of people that do this and try to give them the spiel but I feel like even when they're asking the question, they don't understand that what they're asking because um, there's just not the people just don't understand it. People don't understand any of it. Thrift is it uh, is it mostly like older people that you'll have that sort of experience with, like older than this, fifty? No, this person was like in their twenties. Oh, whoa! And was asking these questions. Huh. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um. And and I guess uh, you know I th you know there's a store in town here that that's called uh, Community in Vancouver, and they've always called themselves Community Thrift and Vintage. They were like, we're going both mm. sides of the spectrum. I'm like, <laughs> at first I was like, that's weird. Their bases, but I I like we're kind of respect it now because I'm I think it it's, it's honest for one thing, and I get and they do have cheap stuff too, and it it works for them, and they're not like deceiving anybody with it. There you go. Yeah, they they covered their bases there. So, thrift yeah. and vintage. No, yeah, it's so funny, I, man. Like, oh, I was just ahead. gonna say, like, I asked about if it's mostly older people because my mom, you know, I've been doing, I've been in this like vintage world thing for the past couple of years, and she'll still, she'll still see like we're hanging out, and I'm wearing like an old shirt, and she'll be like, "Is that so, Matt? Is that shirt retro?" And I'm like, I mean, yeah, I guess it is, but <laughs> it's vintage. That's all. It's not retro. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. It's like, are you going to another thrifty thing? Are you filming yeah. at the thrift again, Matt? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah. Like, it's it's a multi, multi billion dollar business. And, you know, it goes to show because you are you are in a position you work for easy and bid stitch doing all the content, all the editing, all the filming. Uh -huh. So you're in like a role that is based in our world, but really has nothing to do with buying and selling per se. Like you're promoting easy. Yeah. That is a buy sell app, but you're like, you're paid by a, another company to be going and filming. And you, you're, you have a career essentially in this multi-billion dollar business. That's totally outside of buying and selling. Yeah, and it's fucking nuts, really. I, I just yeah. want to say for a, a moment how crazy it is to me and I mean, how thankful I am, really, and grateful because, you know, like, I am I started off thrifting, like, a lot of people, like, 10 years ago, more. But I was just thrifting for myself. And I would buy vintage shit without even thinking twice about it. Like, I'd just be like... Oh, this is cool. You know, I think I had that sense of like, oh, this is old, but I was never like, oh, vintage single dingles, like <laughs> that good Hanes tag, dude. Like it was always just like cool old shit. Like uh, I have this crazy like grave digger long sleeve with like crazy flames and I got it probably 10 years ago uh, and it didn't even fit me when I got it, but it was just a thing where I was like, that's sick. I'm going to buy it. Um, and then you know, also like a lot of people, when COVID hit, I didn't have a job. I was still thrifting. And my buddy actually got me into reselling on Depop because it was like, might as well. I mean, we have time. We have space to keep shit. Let's, like, let's just start selling shit. Um, and then, you know, he put me you on gotta give, You got to give him a shout out. What's, what, what's your yeah. buddy's name? Uh, so he actually doesn't really resell anymore. He kind of has like a storage unit with shit and is just like selling off his Depop a little bit. But uh, Gems Guam Vintage, J-E-M-S-G-U-A-M. -E um, he's okay. like my best friend. We've been friends since I was like 10 or 11. Um, so yeah, big shout out to Quinn. 
he got me into reselling and he turned me on to you and bid stitch and it was like yeah i mean during the pandemic i was just following pages i was getting into it i was like really excited about learning about shit because you were always posting like you know like little knowledge segments on how to identify shit or what have you and bid stitch was like doing the same type of shit and i was like this is awesome um i got super into it and i never in a million years would have guessed that i could have dm'd bid stitch and become became like a video editor and <laughs> i mean i guess the the main thing that sets me apart um my trajectory from everyone else that's doing that has been doing the same shit i mean there's some exceptions obviously like content creators who know how to edit, but like I went to school for video shit and dropped out and did not have a job related to that major for 10 fucking years, literally just working random bullshit jobs and you know, yeah, nothing to do with my actual interests. And then here I am and I, it feels like I've, I've made it in a way the the serendipity of having the vintage interest and the video editing, and it's just like, it's there now. So, how did that all um, go down? I I kind of vaguely remember when I first met you, like via doing some stuff with Bidstitch. But was it like, uh, did you respond to an ad on Bidstitch looking for video or something? Literally, they posted on their story, on their Instagram story, like, "Yo, we need a video editor, like DM us." And I did, and it's funny actually. I have a little. Uh, dirt um oh i got a bunch of dirt we, we on bit stitch we baby <laughs> uh, uh, uh specifically london but you know i don't think he's gonna watch this so it's we're all good uh everyone loves to hate on london and honestly i think he likes to be hated on too because he likes the attention but fuck it uh that's probably accurate yeah when, when i first like responded they were like oh, okay uh sick and then fucking ghosted me and ended up hiring some other kid who was like probably like 18 or something. And like a week went by and I was like, fuck, you know, whatever. I was, I was, it was, it was at least worth asking. And then they hit me up again and he's like, Hey, so this kid actually sucks. Can you like, <laughs> and then I think that's the first thing I edited was for F is in Frank. You guys had like a, a thing. Some sort of like market the Toronto event, yeah, 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 yeah. The first, uh, the the first clothing show in Toronto, yeah. You you made us yeah. a like promo reel that we used as the ad. Yeah, that was, that was like my that was actually super successful. Yeah, and that was like my trial by fire. That was like, okay, he's good, he can do it. Um, I remember having that conversation with London because the same thing. He was kind of like, our our guy's not pulling pulling the weight or whatever we don't like in the creative and then he said he got another guy and i'm like well give it a go and i remember i remember this specifically because i was sitting in my car in malibu about to go surfing talking about that that promo for that event uh and then yeah and then you came through with the wicked edit and then and then we finally met up at at festivus but we'd have we'd known each other for a minute but that spending three days at festivus really uh Sleeping in the same bed pretty much really gets you <laughs> acquainted with somebody. Yeah, dude. The camaraderie uh, happened the camaraderie. quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's super sweet. So give us more uh, history into like how you got thrifting. Obviously, your homie set you up and kind of like showed you some stuff. But um, was this like something through college or how did this all happen? Actually, yeah, that's funny because... When you first asked that question, I was like, I don't fucking know. But yes, it was in college. Um, like in high school, I was just like your typical trying to fit in sort of kid. So like freshman year, I'm shopping at American Eagle. And uh, then that turns into Urban Outfitters, right? And then I guess Urban Outfitters, they were like, they started that vintage like uh, sort of style like where they'd have the vintage looking band shirts and everything. But yeah, it yeah, was in college yeah. where I was like, I went to art school. So, you know, I, I'm around all these like grungy dudes uh, in Philly. 
and so I was in college. It was, it's been 10 years since my first year of college. And I remember back then it was like 2013 in Philly, there's a bunch of thrift stores. And there was, this is interesting also is that there was like a vintage store in Philly that didn't market itself as a thrift store at all. It was like, this is a vintage store, but their prices were like thrift store prices. You could get like a vintage, I got like a vintage crazy uh, Philadelphia Eagles crew neck for like $15. So it was nice. like, I mean, that's not exactly thrift store prices, but it's like a sweatshirt that you could sell for like a hundred bucks now, probably. Pretty dope. Um, yeah. And like, yeah. They, see, they're, they're keeping you on your toes. They're like, we're going to do the opposite of everybody else. We're going to call ourselves vintage and go bottom of the barrel prices. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like true vintage there too, going for like cheap, prices i mean like obviously i haven't been in the game very long so i'm curious i guess to ask you like in 20 if you could think back to 2013 like what was like the commodity like the hot commodity like you know pandemic it was 90s t-shirts or whatever now it's like true vintage sort of like what was going for a lot of money then first thing i want to say is like uh, Polo and Tom, mm. Tommy might've just been starting in 2013. It might be, I think it was more like 2016. So Tommy was probably just coming into favor like that nineties, uh, big logo, Tommy stuff, the crazy jackets, yeah. the rugby's yeah. stuff like that. That was like the beginning of it. And I would say like 2015 was peaking. Polo was big in 2013 for sure. There was like polo had such a long run where we were like look always hyped on polo and it always would yeah. hold like real value. It's like kind of gone down in recent years, but back then for sure it was like solid. Dude, um, yeah. I remember thrifting actually back then and finding polo and I, I don't even think I was aware of like the, the value of it, but all my friends were always like hyped, like, yeah, dude, the pony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were rocking like yeah, the polo. Dude. The polo polos and shit, yeah. Uh, polo is always sick. And then as far as true vintage goes, uh, you know, denim was always king, but I feel mm. like leather was so popular back then. Like, you find a lot of leathers that are worth not much today that were worth, like, 500 plus then. Damn. So that was, like, always go straight to the leather rack at the thrift store. And, and yeah, that's changed a lot. Now I feel like it's only really denim. I mean, there's other things in true vintage that are worth money, but the leather fell off hard. Damn. Yeah. 2013. It's hard even to like picture where I was. I mean, I know where I was living and everything, but like the years all blur together. It seems like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's the one thing I'll say. I mean, I'm sure you know too. Is like, I'm almost 30, and it's like time every every year. It's like accelerated. It goes by faster than the last one. Yeah, you're like, wow, right? it's like almost Christmas again. Holy shit, another yeah. year gone. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. Um, that's why, like, as a parent, I, like, try to take the – I try to, like, keep that in mind and, like, spend as much quality time with my kids because I'm like, you know, they, they don't last in any one, like, in any one, um, like, period for long. It's like they move on, they grow up, and they're, like, changing so fast. you got to, like, enjoy it, man. Be there. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So yeah, sure. 29, dude, it's your birthday. When this comes out, it's not going to be your birthday, but everyone's got to go wish uh, Matt here a happy birthday on his IG. Your IG yes, is please. uncommon. Huh? Your IG, uncommon. Uncommon. What's your IG? Most recent I never remember your IG. Rep? Most recent. Bro, giving people the wrong Instagram. <laughs> Well, you said you're you're the guy. You get to you get to edit this out. Yeah. Oh, yeah Sorry. Right. Most recent. <laughs> most. Recent. Yours out of everybody. I never remember. I don't know why. Most recent vintage. Go wish Matt happy birthday. Even though it's going to be almost a week after his birthday. Big two nine. Oh, but I, I, oh, this will be out after Thriftcon anyway. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I want to talk about um. We need to come up with a question, Matt, for the for the YouTubers here, for the people scrolling on YouTube, tuning in on YouTube. 
What is a question we're going to throw to them to comment down below? Hmm. Something juicy. Quick break from the show, everybody. I wanted to do an open call for guests. If you want to come on the show, if you have cool stories, hit me up. Let's have you on. You know, things that I think uh, I'm looking for to bring on the show. I, I, I really want good stories of digging. I need good digging stories. If you have been on a trip and you've scored big time, hit me up. I want you on the show. Also, business development. If you built something crazy and you want to share it with the world and you have some good tips on how to run a successful business, I want you on the show. So, um, yeah, hit me up. Also, if you know of people that you want to hear their stories on this show, send them in. Let's go. Mm. The only one I can think of is like a multiple part question. I don't know okay, if let's that's go multiple, work. multiple part. I, well, I'm going to assume that like everyone watching this probably is a reseller or is like into vintage in, in a way yeah. that it's like a big part of their life. So um, Good assumption. if you went to college are you using your degree now in some way that's related to vintage? Okay, wait. I'm trying to think of how to ask okay, this. Okay. Because it's like, because like not everyone out there is going to go to or has gone to college. Uh, what was your major in college? And do does it relate at all to like what you're doing for work now? Or if you haven't gone to college, uh, do you plan to, or do you see reselling as like an alternative? Like, I don't know. Ah, that, 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 it's too complicated. Okay, that I like it. You, 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 no, you, you got know what some, I'm saying. You got though. some va You got some uh, meat on the bone there. So basically, the question yeah. is: If you went to college, first of all, uh, are you finding value in using that degree in your career in vintage right now? And if you haven't gone, say, maybe comment like, do you wish you would have gone? Or are you like, I don't need that. We're just good without learn as you go. School hard knocks. There you go. Is that a yeah. good way to put it? Yeah. Share your thoughts on college in the comments. Because yeah. I, I don't regret it, but I have been in debt for the past 10 years. And I actually just paid it off. Uh, nice. Which is awesome. Good work. But, but I, I'm not going to discourage people from going to college, but I will say that you don't need to go to college. If you have something you're really passionate about and you're really good about, or you're really good at, then, I mean, I don't know. It's very case by case, but I think college can be, uh, I don't want to say a scam, but I don't know. <laughs> Did you go hey, to man. college? No, I'll, I'll, I'll share my thoughts on college. So, yeah, yeah so please. everybody, you guys got the question. <laughs> share your thoughts on college down below. Also, drop your IGs in there. And in the sake of uh, me being terrible with IGs, let us know your IG and everybody else can go follow you. Put them in the comments. Back to the college talk. Yeah, no, I never went to college. Straight out of high school. Well, actually, I took one lay year and I went back to Vermont. And then, Oh, no, I think even before that, though, I did apply. I applied to university in Canada, out here in BC, Simon Fraser University, didn't get in, got rejected. Damn. And uh, I was like, well, you don't want me? Fuck you. <laughs> I won't go. I never tried again to go because I just kept snowboarding and like working and whatever. And I was like very into snowboarding. So I never even thought about it again. My thoughts are like, I think there's so much value in it for for educational purposes, but also like um, social purposes. Like I, I, I think yes. it's not so much like all educational purposes, yep. you know, like I used to go party at UVM and some of these other university towns around the East Coast and like – you're going to, you're going to get your, like, you probably friends you're going to be have for the rest of your life at college or university. And, um, you're going to meet a lot of people who knows like what's going to change, you know? And I think that period, like what of growth in that age range is huge. Right. So you like sort of figure out what you want to do for sure. But I will say from the educational perspective, I don't really think like the values there for the money. I 100% so, agree, dude. Yeah. yeah, you like pretty much took the words out of my mouth. Like, 
the only reason I don't regret going to college is because of the people I met when I was there. there you and go, yeah. albeit, uh, I'm not really friends with any of them anymore. Like everything kind of fizzled out. Uh, but I did make some good connections and it was a very formative time. Like after I dropped out, I still had these friends. I still had these connections. Like I was, I've been making like music videos on the side for like 10 years. And so I had friends that I could make music videos for and get paid for it and have a creative outlet and sort of, I, I learned more from just like talking to people and having friendships than I did in any of my classes. So take that. As there you go. Moment. I, I think that, yeah, the, the way the world is set up now for success, it's like you can learn everything you want to learn. You can get private education for like subjects rather than say like a degree is going to give you a broad education base in some subject, right? But if you want to get into a certain field, you can do like private courses, classes, maybe some version of school, but not like a college and learn what you need to learn. Um and you will learn because at that point you're like doing it because you want to learn it. So many people go into college going like, I just got to pick some shit here. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Instead of like really knowing what they want to do. And until you really are like super invested and interested in something, you won't learn it. Um, well, I guess. Yeah. I feel like the only exception I can think of is if like you're a fucking genius or you're really, you're just really smart. You want to go in, you want to be a doctor. You want to like be a scientist or, you know, uh, an architect or a, a, a civil engineer or something like that. Then, yeah, you probably should go to college. But I'm saying like at least art college or like liberal arts. I don't know if you need to do that. Yeah, true enough. Because there is, there's, there's, no, there's certain things like no way. There's certain professions that like you have to. There's no exceptions. There's no way around the schooling, right? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Fuck That's college. Interesting. Fuck college. Especially <laughs> to get into the vintage world. I think, I think. Yeah. The other thing I'll say is that, you know, if we're going to talk about schooling here, it's like tip, t typical school, high, at least up to high school, is set up to, um, um create civilians if you will civilians cool. in society right it's mm -hmm. not set up to create ceos or fucking entrepreneurs or bosses right like it's set up to create worker bees for society and like yeah uh, i say that out of my opinion you guys can disagree with me but you have to like go above and beyond to become something extra extra ordinary in in society you got to like work harder you got to learn more than the, it's going to teach you in those facilities right now mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's it's a well it is a bad thing to a degree because it doesn't set us up for success in a lot of areas it doesn't teach us about like finances ever none of those none of the schooling really teaches it teaches us math which you need for finances but it doesn't teach you like how to get a mortgage how to like set up investments all these important things that are it doesn't teach you like good communication per se like it does yeah. through the act of being in school but like it doesn't specifically have courses on like here's how to be effective as a leader or here's how to be effective in communications like things like that that are very important um there's probably lots of other things i'm missing and people are going to disagree with this that's fine yeah but we also I mean, need we we need all levels of society you can't have society without all the levels yes totally and i i generally will would agree with you on that and I think it's also very like, um, I mean, it depends too, you know, like if you're going to a public high school, uh, chances are you're not going to have a great arts program. You're not going to have great extracurriculars. You're not going to have like, for example, like the only like objection I could think of is like, um, my girlfriend's sister is like a, a whiz kid. Right. But she had great opportunities in her high school and it was a public high school too. So it's like not all public high schools, but like she had like the debate club in her high school, which I think would be a great opportunity to learn how to speak in public and have charisma and, you know, how to talk to people. But yeah, totally. 
Totally. Uh, like my high school didn't have debate club, you know, we had drama club, which I was in. And <laughs> I don't know if that ever applied yeah. to any other part of my life, but it was fun at least. But yeah. And the other part of it is too. So I guess there is, there is parts of that that are there and, you know, it's like they, it favors the people that are willing to go the extra mile. And if you want to, if you take the initiative in high school, then you can learn a lot of things, but a lot of people don't because they don't really yeah. know what, they don't really understand the usefulness of it, but that's just being a kid, I guess. And you, you, you take all this stuff for granted when you're young. And Absolutely. the other part is that, you know, schools in Canada and America, I, I don't know about all the rest of the world, but I'm assuming it's the same. Like your, your high school is based on like your income zone that you live in, right? So it's like the mm. funding of your school is based on the taxes being paid in that district or whatever, which means like, you you know, it's not equal. It's not equal for everybody. It's yeah. you're getting funded by the wealth of the people in that district. And that's uh, lopsided. So poor areas get less ed- education and rich areas get more education. So it's like set up for failure for certain people in a deg- in certain degree. And then you, they got to work way harder to break through that. Yep. For sure. Not even to mention just like what, you know, your luck of the draw, like what, you, you know, uh, income level you're born into and, and all that. So you have no control of that. At yeah. All. Yeah. So it's all a, it's all a big, uh, game of chance. But if you work hard, you can beat the odds, people. That's for sure. And I think that. that's it. Like, there's, it's not impossible. And I, it's, there's no excuses. Like, if you want something, go get it. I, the only thing I would say is, like, make sure you want something before you go into 10 years of debt <laughs> to, to yeah. get it. You yeah. Know, make sure it's something <laughs> you actually want. Yeah. That would be the takeaway here. For sure. And I will say, you know. I've always been into video shit since I was a kid, you know, like with my, my dad would, you know, break out the VHS camera when I was like six years old and we'd make like stop motion animation on the VHS camera of like shoes walking across the floor and shit. And so I've always been into it. And I guess that's something I'd like to say not to get too corny here, but like, I've been doing this since I was a kid and it took me until I was 26 or 27 until it actually like paid off in a way that felt complete. Like it's what I've been working towards. So don't give up on, uh, I can't say that too corny. Don't give up on your don't dreams, give up man. On your dreams, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but actually though. Yeah. I know. I always hear that, uh, that, that quote by, um, who's the Canadian guy in Super Bad? Like the cop dude. Uh, fuck, he has the company that makes like ashtrays now and weed accessories. Anyway, um, well, not Seth Rogen. Thing. Yeah, Seth, Seth Rogen. Rogen. He's <laughs> he has some interview where he's like, "You can't fail if you never give up." You know, failure only sets in when you've when you've given up. You know, just. Like the odds are stacked in your favor if you just keep going. So keep the dream alive. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude. Like I don't I don't want to be all like corny, sentimental, like inspirational speaker here, but I do really genuinely feel that way. And I don't know. I don't know if I'd I could have said that two years ago, but um yeah, I just kept going and eventually you'll get lucky. That's how I like to think about it. I feel like I got lucky, but not because it was pure luck. It's because I worked so hard to the point where something that wouldn't have been an opportunity before was. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. That's great, man. That's a good attitude. It's true. And I think, you know, you have to keep working at the thing and you got to be open to the luck you got to like keep your mind in a place where like those lucky moments can happen keep working hard but you don't know what they're going to be that's the problem so it's hard to like you can't visualize what the luck is going to when it's going to come or how it's going to come you just have to be like open to opportunity yeah absolutely 
that's how like the best things in life happen. I think the things yeah. that come out of nowhere and you, you grab it. Luck favors the bold, you know, the people that yeah, actually put themselves true. on the line and keep going. <clears throat> okay. Let's, let's jump into uh Festivus talks, man. Everybody probably wants to hear this. Oh, and uh, I think I'm interested because I wasn't there this year. We were both there last year for the inaugural, you know, quick recap in my mind of last year. If you got, we did a whole episode on that. If you guys want to go back and like re tune up on that, feel free. But it was, you know, expected to be a bit of a shit show. It was expected maybe to be a failure in some senses by, by many, including myself. I don't know what I, I was probably somewhat thinking it was going to be a failure last year. You know, we just yeah. kind of wanted to go and have fun and document it. No expectations. And um, we did that. Like we said before, I met Matt on the way out there. Dylan came with us, I think. London was going to come and then bailed or something last year. I don't even know what <laughs> He <happened>. did. <laughs> I, he, he was supposed to go in my place. And I remember it was like a, a text, group text with you and me and Dylan. And he's like, Matt's coming. And you're like, oh, does that mean London's not coming? Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have Matt come. Yeah, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't remember that, but it sounds like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we just had a fucking ball we rolled out there got to hang with everybody and got to see what unfolded uh you know you guys have probably all seen all the things there's a full documentary that matt created that's on the youtube you can watch it was just a cool time cool experience brit really pulled it all together brit's energy don't need to speak about it too much but he's fucking a ball of energy man like a never-ending deep dark um, mine shaft of energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He really brings it all together. And like you, that kind of event without his energy wouldn't probably be possible. But so all in all last year, great, great experience. And then to cap it off, we had the, the auction of the $76,000 jeans, which this year got topped, but I don't know if it like had the hype maybe of those ones, because that was the first sale of that, size that was maybe like made public and who yeah. knows um oh also we should touch on that article that came out recently about that about last year which we'll talk about after but so yeah so that's the recap of last year now you went out there again with dylan and london so let's hear your experiences of this year yeah all right so i will say the vibes were good you know, like last year it was like a, it pretty much just felt like a party. It didn't feel like a, you know, like a, uh, like an, a, an event, you know, ThriftCon and Festivus are completely different ends of the spectrum. I feel like it, totally. it was like a people just, everyone there is in the game. Like everyone there knew knows each other, so it's like a very like community, like close knit sort of feeling. I think. Um, yeah, I will say that the vibes were consistent this year, but I I'm gonna say that it was disappointing this year, for sure. Okay, in um, what way? It just didn't live up to. The first one. And I think I, the first one was hard to top because it's like the first event of its kind. You had yeah. all that hype surrounding the jeans. And like you said, it was like the first sale of, of that caliber that was like in the public sphere. So, I mean, how do you top that? And Brit tried with the oldest pair of Levi's, you know, like, I don't know how they marketed it last year exactly. Like, I don't think they called them the oldest pair, but no, but like, yeah, I mean, I these ones they were, yeah, I think they're marketing like most expensive public auction or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah. But so let's, let's, let me, let me just run through it. Let me try to recap it as best as I can. 
Yeah, uh, like talk about it. Like, like let's go into a little bit of details. Like the beginning, you guys got there. Like first impressions, maybe of this year. Yeah. So last year, I think we missed the first day. Um, I think we got there on. I think we showed up like. So I think Friday. Mo- they had Friday a morning auction. We missed. Yeah. We showed up Friday morning. Yeah. Yeah. So this year we got there on. Well, I got there on fucking Tuesday for some reason. Like, oh, yeah, we got to fly out Tuesday. And Dylan and I are, like, chilling at this Airbnb that was, like, 45 minutes away from the Festivus. And so Tuesday and Wednesday, we were literally just, like, dicking around, uh, which was chill, (laughs) I guess. But so then fucking London shows up, like, Wednesday night, I guess. Uh, And so the first day was not super eventful, like... I will say I got to shout this place out because it was the hands down the best diner. Like the one we went to last year. Remember that one with like make it Christmas with the salsa. Yeah, and totally. Shit? That place was awesome. But this place, dude, I mean, it was classic like bar seating and they had the dudes with the grit on the griddle, two dudes working all the orders right in front of you behind the counter Shredding up potatoes on a cheese grater, like everything's like right Proper. in front of you. Yeah, and it was delicious. It was awesome. So, um, what's it called? Durango Diner, I think. Durango Diner. Okay. It was like in the town. Uh, Dope. So, also, we're making a. I'm making like a little vlog this year. Uh, so, guys, stay tuned for that. London is is the host of it. So. There will be laughs to be had at his expense. I'll just say that much. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Okay, I like that. I just got a call from London. That's funny. I didn't pick up. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it's not that hard to make London look goofy. Uh, but, so, okay. So, the first day, they had an auction that night. Um, there was actually a pretty crazy moment where... Well, that brings us to the end of the free 45-minute version of the podcast. Thanks, Matt, for coming on and sharing your stories. Had a great chat. And there's lots more to hear if you continue on. How do you continue on the podcast? Well, you can sign up as a member right here on YouTube, or you can jump on the Patreon. Free trial on the Patreon, so you have to pay nothing up front to listen to the rest of this episode. And then after the first free week, it's only five bucks a month. That's $1.25 per episode we put out. We typically put out four a month. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Jump on the Patreon, join here on YouTube. Make sure you follow the channel and uh, follow Matt on IG and go follow me. See you guys on the next one.